Hey guys, in this video we've got the Traxxas TRX 4 again and I'm going to show you what it takes to completely disassemble and what is inside of the front and rear axle. We're going to start by completely removing the front axle from the car. We'll completely disassemble it. I'll show you everything that goes into it and then I'll disassemble parts of the rear to show you the differences between the front and rear axle. So let's get right into it and I'll show you all of the steps it takes to completely disassemble these axles. The first thing we're going to do is remove the wheel and tire from the vehicle. Once the wheel and tire is removed, we then have access to the screw that holds on the drag link and tie rod. We're going to remove the links from the axle one at a time until we can get this thing free. Following the drag link and tie rod, we're going to remove the pan hard screw from the axle. And then we're going to move on to the lower link and shock mount bolt on each side. Once all of the links are free, also need to remove the cable that's attached with a ball cup to that micro servo and the one screw that retains the cable onto the chassis. Once that's all out of the way, the axle will be able to swing out as soon as you get that last upper link screw removed. Now that the axle's free, we can begin to disassemble it further. Remove the two kingpin screws per portal axle. Make sure not to lose the small spacer that goes inside of that C-hub that acts as the spacer so that when you tighten down the knuckles, they don't bind. Set those aside and again, make sure not to lose those spacers. We can then remove the portal and the inner axle shaft will follow. The inner axle shaft is attached to the upper portal gear in this. There's three small screws that retain the inner bearing to that portal in place. Remove those three screws and at that point you'll be able to use the inner axle shaft to help pull that gear and bearing out of the portal. You can remove that outer bearing and that will give you access to the pin that constructs the CV joint. You can push that out with a small driver allowing you to separate the inner axle shaft, the pivot pin inside of that inner axle shaft, as well as that upper portal gear. You can see here, that's that upper pivot pin that goes inside of the inner axle shaft. Pretty standard CV type design. Here you can see the tang on the inner axle shaft. These inner axle shafts are pretty small in diameter, but with the reduction from the portal boxes, they're not under all that much stress. Remove the six screws on the back of the portal and the two screws on the front of the portal to separate the two halves of the portal box, giving you access to the inner remaining gear that's still in place. You can see here the bearing sizes on the portal axles, much, much larger than normal wheel bearings you've seen on standard solid axle trucks. The set pin retains the 12 millimeter hex this 12 millimeter hex rides on a 6 millimeter stub that necks down with 4 millimeter standard wheel threads. This does give it a very nice beefy design because that 2 millimeter pin rides on a 6 millimeter shaft rather than a 5 millimeter shaft, giving you a lot of extra strength. You can remove that last outside bearing, and you can see that that bottom portal gear is attached to that stub axle via a standard 2 millimeter pin. At that point, it gives you just the stub axle, and here you can see all of the components laid out that make up that portal box. Now we have the axle housing remaining. We're going to remove the drive shaft with the set pin. This will allow us to remove some of the other components inside the axle here in a second. Remove the four screws from the back side of the axle, and this will allow you to remove that diff cover. You can see on that diff cover there's three sets of half bearing races. These support the three bearings that make up the support for this selectable differential. You can see that I removed that shift fork there. You can simply twist it and it'll come off of that cable. That is what is the selector for the uh, locking and unlocking differential. That pinion gear will simply pull out. And you can also see uh, removing the bearings from the axle can just be pushed out with a set of uh, pliers or another tool. The bearing sizes on these are nice and large. Here I'm removing the E-clip that retains that cable into place. 
This cable can then be pushed out of the axle, but to completely remove it, you will have to unscrew the ball cup from the uh, chassis side. This uses very small threads. You also need to be extremely careful to make sure that you match the length exactly to how it was. The cable length is very important. Here you can see that selectable differential. Remove the outside bearing, then you can remove the uh, dog that engages and disengages the locking differential. That is driven by that pin that can be removed center bearing rides on the diff cup. The diff cup is plastic on this, so the drive dog, which is metal, diff engages and disengages into the plastic diff cup. You remove the outside bearing from the ring gear and that will give you access to the four screws that hold the ring gear onto the diff cup. Once you've got those four screws removed, you can separate the ring gear from the diff cup and that will give you access to the differential gear spiders. The drive gear on the outside can be removed separately. That's a heavier duty hardened steel gear compared to the centered ring gear. You can push on the one side of the output of the differential to help you remove the four spider gears and two cross pins from the differential cup. You can see that these are made up of two different shafts with flat spots that lie onto each other to get all aligned. Press a little bit firmer and you can get the rest of that side spider gear removed. Here you can see the diff cup with the engagement for the locking differential. And here is that assembly all laid out to give you an idea of all the parts. The C-hubs to these axles are held on with three countersunk screws. Remove those screws and the C-hub pulls off nicely. This is a non-adjustable caster axle. Removing the lower link mounts, simply two screws and that unit pulls off. The other side is the exact same even though the pan hard mount is incorporated into it. Here you can see the receiving side that's built onto the axle housing. One thing to note is when you are reinstalling this, make sure that that shoulder on that 12 millimeter hex goes in towards the portal box. It can go on the other way and you can tighten the set pin that way, but you will get a lot of rubbing and that will definitely tear up that portal box. So make sure that you install it properly. This is the rear portal. Taking this off just to show you the only differences, are they're very small. When you take off this portal box, the inner axle shaft has the flat tangs on each side rather than the CV style axle. You can also see here that the adapter on the end of the axle looks different than the C-hub that we have on the front, obviously. It is again held on by three screws just like the front. The upper gear in the rear portal box is not retained by three small screws like the front axle did. This one simply pulls out. That wraps up the front and rear axles showing you all the components that make up how they go together. You can check out the next video which will be the disassembly of that center mounted two speed transmission. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you on the next one.